Today I'm going to show you how to turn a basic t-shirt and sew it up into a v-neck t-shirt and we're starting right now. <laughs> It's Elizabeth from ElizabethMavis.com helping you sew something creative. Today I'm taking on a reader request. Somebody had contacted me a while back and she was asking how she could take a crew neck t-shirt and turn it into a v-neck. So that's what I decided that I'm gonna show you how to do today. This is a really simple and quick alteration that you can do and you can do it on any t-shirt that you might happen to have in your closet. This is really practical, right? Because how many times have you bought a t-shirt and it was really fun, it said something fun, it reminded you of a place, but it just wasn't quite your style. You didn't really know what to, what to wear it with, etc., etc. So sometimes that V-neck style, just that little tiny little retweaking, can be exactly what you need to make it something that you're gonna, you're gonna wear and you're going to appreciate more. So let's get into the tutorial and I'll see you on the other side. So here we have our t-shirt. It's just a basic t-shirt. You can use either a crew neck or a scoop neck t-shirt for this. The first thing you wanna figure out is where you want the bottom of the V-neck to live. So I'm just going to put a pin right there about center front to mark that. So the next thing we need to do is remove the neckline of this t-shirt. We're not gonna be able to reuse it again, so we need to go ahead and just remove the old one. So I've got my embroidery scissors here and I'm just going to start removing the stitches from the back neckline. You can see it has a little piece of fabric that's covering over that seam. That's a really common finish that you're gonna see in a lot of ready-to-wear tees. It's actually a really nice finish, but it does make for a little bit a little bit more work for us when we go to deconstruct it. So I'm just using the blade of my scissors to just get in underneath those stitches and just kind of pop them out and then just cut them really gently. Be really careful here to make sure that you're not cutting cutting any of your fabric here. We're just trying to remove this partic this fabric that's covering over that seam. And then once we do, you're gonna see the, the neckline seam. And once we open up the seam, we can start removing the stitches or, that are surged on here in this case. And I'll show you a really quick way to remove the serger stitches when we get there after we get this little neckband piece off that's covering over that seam there. So just use your fingers, just cut a couple stitches at a time. You can use the use your fingers to just pull out those threads a little bit at a time. I like to use the embroidery scissors versus a traditional seam ripper just because it slows you down and it helps you be a little bit more precise so that you don't run the risk of actually cutting cutting your, your fabric here. We don't want to do that. We're just trying to remove these stitches so we can get down to the raw edge of where our neckline is. So just take your time here. This is a great thing to do while you're working where you're sitting down in front of the TV at night or something. Just take your time. Once you've once you've removed that fabric, then we're going to go and we're going to start removing the stitches around the neckline. So here I'm removing actually the needle threads. So if you look at a surged seam like this, you can see there's there's four different threads that make it up. The needle the needle threads are the ones that are that are making the, those two parallel stitches. You can see I've got my blade under the blade of my scissors under the under both of the that set that's those two rows of stitches. If you pull the if you pull those out, you can kind of wiggle them out of the of the seam, and the rest the other two threads of that make up the serger seam are just going to fall off of fall off of the neckline. If you cut the other threads first, it's going to make it kind of bunchy and it's not going to work very well. So just keep doing that all the way around the neckline to remove the rest of the neckband. Since we can't reuse our old neckband, we're going to actually make a new one from the hem here. So I'm just going to cut off the hem just above that stitching line. The cool thing about this is that we've got plenty, we've got plenty of length to deal to deal with on our on our t-shirt here from from the hem. So if we make a really extreme V, we're still gonna have plenty of fabric to make to go ahead and make a new neckband out of this. So it's a really handy thing. We're really not gonna lose a whole lot of length in the t-shirt, so just don't worry about it. And it's also basted together, so it's gonna save us a step later on when we go to sew on this neckband. And it's already pressed too. So we're saving a lot of time here by just, by just reusing this hem here to make ourselves a new neckband. So just go ahead, cut all the way around your hem so that you can have that neckband piece and then 
just set it aside. So now we've got our t-shirt here. The neckline has been removed. I went ahead and gave, gave it a press too, right at the neckline, just so that everything would sit nice. But go ahead and fold your shoulder seams together. We're gonna fold the neckline edges together as well. If you wanna add some pins here, just to keep all of the all of the seams on top of each other, that's not a bad, not a bad idea. What we're doing here is we're trying to find that center front line, and that's gonna help us make a nice, make a nice beautiful curve that's even on both sides of our neckline. I like to also fold the, the side seams together too. So just smooth out, smooth out the layers of fabric so they are on top of each other nice and evenly. And from there, we're gonna grab a French curve ruler and we're going to draw a line with a curve that's going to go down to where we left, we had that pin that we put in earlier. Can't really see the pin on the video there, so I'm sorry about that, but just make a small little quarter inch line that's perpendicular to center front there. And then we're going to use the neckline edge and I'm just gonna use my curve to just gently curve down towards that line. This is a really wide neckline on this particular t-shirt, but if you have a if you have a crew neck, you can make a much sharper V than I can make right here. But this is still gonna make a nice V neckline. You'll see as we go. Okay, so just go ahead and trace off a little, little curve there, and then we're gonna cut right on that line. So before we do that, I'm just gonna put a couple pins in there just to make sure that our fabric's not really gonna move on us while we're cutting it. So go ahead and grab your scissors and cut right on the line that you just drew. So we're cutting, cutting away just that little bit of fabric. And when I open it up, you're gonna see that we do have more of a V, a v neckline there. So just kind of taper it into the original neckline. And there we have more, much more of a sloping, sloping V. So a very gentle V on this particular one. And so now we need to finish off this neckline with our neckbands. But if I use the original neckband, going back to that, you can see that it's, it's inches, inches too short. So if I tried to sew this on, I would get all kinds of bunches and it just wouldn't look very nice. So instead, that's why we, we cut off the hem. So the next thing we wanna do now is measure for how long we need our neckband to be. So I went ahead and folded my shoulder seams together again. If you wanna pin those just to keep them so they're not moving, that's great. This is basically gonna give us a half measurement of what our total neckline needs to be. So just grab your ta a tape measure and I'm gonna measure a quarter inch away from that raw, e that raw edge. Just using the top edge of my tape there to just very carefully go along that edge with my fingers. And that's gonna give me the total, the total length of the neckline, but remember this is just a half of it. So right there at about 15 inches there, that's, that's my halfway point. So my, my total neckline is about 30 inches, 30 inches long. So what we need to do is subtract 10% of that. So if it's 30 inches, I'm gonna take away three inches, right? Cause that's 10% that's of 30. So, or if I'm going on the half, then I'm gonna subtract 1.5 inches right there. So when I go ahead and fold that again, it'll be just that little bit shorter. So about 26 and a half. 26 and three quarters. My math is my math is rusty at the moment. <laughs> Minus 10%. If you want to do this in centimeters, it's even more accurate. But you can do it either way. Just just know that you're taking off 10%. And that's the total length that you need to subtract from your neckline. So now I'm going to grab my, my fabric for my neckband that we set aside earlier. And I'm going to cut it to that length that I'm that I measured it. And actually, I'm going to show you how you can do this on the fold, right? So I'm just gonna mark up that, that full line for my, for my tape that I marked earlier. And I'm gonna take it all the way to the end of my tape. And I'm just gonna cut off those edges. You could of course do this with the, the full length of it, but you could do this either way. Whatever is easier for you is what works. We have lots of choices when we sew, and this is one of them. <laughs> it still works, it still works. Okay, so right when I get to the end of that tape, I'm just gonna cut cut off my neckband right there at that length, and now we can get on to sewing it. So now overlap the ends of our V-neck to create a little V right there, and then I need you to stitch right along those edges there, just like that. Okay, so now we need to press up the hem from what we, we cut off earlier. So I'm just gonna press up an inch with my, with my iron there. 
just a little seam all the way around all the way around the bottom of the hem and now we're going to use a twin stretch needle to sew our hem so if there's a twin stretch needle you want to make sure that it's a stretch needle it's going to give you the best results there and I'm just going to show you how to thread that so I've got my top thread and I'm just going to thread it like I would normally and this is going to go on the left side of the needle and I also need to have one that's going to go on the right side of the needle so the top thread the top thread it's going to work just just we're going to thread it just how, how we would how it's looking up top so that this the vertical spool there is going to go on the left side and the horizontal spool is going to go on the right side so i'm just threading both of those through and now i'm just going to change my needle out so i have that double needle in there And then once I have that needle in place, then I'm gonna bring those threads in and just put my, my left thread through the left needle and the right thread through the right needle. And this is going to create basically like a, like a zigzag stitch on the wrong side of our fabric. And it's gonna give us a little bit of recovery in, in our hem. That's really important when you're sewing with knits that you have a little bit of a recovery when you're sewing on the cross grain as you do when you are making a hem. That way it's not going to stretch out on you or do weird things. If you were, if you had industrial machines, you would be using something like a cover stitch machine, but we can simulate the look of a cover stitch machine with a double needle and they look, they look really good. Again, there's no sewing police. They're not coming after you because you have a double needle hem versus a cover stitch hem. It's still going to look really nice. It's definitely gonna pass the five the five foot test. <laughs> so just go ahead and pass that that second bit of thread through that right side of the needle, and then we'll be ready to stitch this hem. The one bummer is that you can't use the needle the needle threaders on your machine when you're threading double needles. So change your sewing machine to a zigzag stitch with a narrow zigzag stitch. So 0.5 width, 2.5 length. And now we're ready to sew this hem. So just drop the, that needle and just gently hold on to your fabric and just go to town. Sew right all the way around your hem. And then I like to tie off my stitches right when I get to the end, just to make sure that they're nice and locked. So just keep sewing all the way around your hem and then that, that part of this t-shirt is good to go. If you like, you could, you could also hand base the hem in place just so it's not moving on you. I've sewn a lot of t-shirt hems like this, so I'm pretty confident, but do what you need to do. So we're just finishing off that hem and then we'll go and finish this neckline. At this point, fold your neckline into quarters and mark each one with a pin and do the same thing for the neckband and then match up those quarters and pin them in place and that will set you up for sewing the neckband in place. I have another video where I show you more detailed how to do this so go ahead and check out that video when it pops up there. So previously we've been using that double needle but now we're going to switch to a 7511 stretch needle. You could also use an 8012 universal needle as long as your as long as your fabric wasn't too stretchy this one isn't particularly but i love i love the 7511 stretch needles for for really most of my knits they work really well so now i have that neckline quartered and pinned to my neckband that is also quartered and pinned and i'm just going to match those raw edges together and start sewing and i'm actually going to start sewing right at that v when i get to that center front i'm going to pivot my needle just so that i get that nice sharp v so when I get right there, I'm gonna take out that, that first pin there. I'm just gonna pivot everything right there. Now, why am I, why have I not pinned everything all the way around? Well, it's really easy to stretch out the fabric on the, on the neckline. So even though I only have four pins in all of this, it actually is all the pins that you need. So once you get your hands in there, you're gonna find that, that those four pins are really all you need. So just match up those raw edges together. And then once that those edges are together, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to curve the top layer, which is my neckband, towards the machine just a little bit. That little bit of curvature is going to ease that shorter neckline, that's the shorter neckband into the, lo the longer neckline. That's what's going to allow this neckband to sit flat. 
be really careful that you don't stretch out the neckline. It's very easy to do. A lot of t-shirt knits do not have a lot of recovery, so they're not going to snap back once you once you stretch them out. So just be really careful with that. As long as you kind of keep your hands moving towards your, your machine, they are not going to stretch out on you. So we get to another quarter point just to remove that pin. Keep on going around. Again, I'm matching up those raw edges of my neckband and my t-shirt. And then I'm just going to curve everything towards my needle just a little bit. You'll find the longer that you sew that your hands really are all the pins that you that you need. Especially when you're working with knits, it's really important to have kind of a light hand so you don't get too aggressive and start stretching things out of, out of whack. This is an easy alteration, but you do need to pay attention here. Okay, one more time. I'm just matching up those raw edges, curving my hands towards everybody. You can see I actually lift my presser foot there. And that's just so that I can pivot everything a little bit more effectively. You don't have to do that. This was an unwieldy kind of neckline because it was so long. So I ended up, I ended up being a little bit more cautious than I would normally. The fabric wasn't quite grumpy, but it was a little grumpy. So sometimes you have to say, you have to say nice things to your fabric, you know? Okay, we're almost around to, the, to where we started stitching. Just going to match up those raw edges one more time, and I'm going to stitch over the first few stitches that I, that I began to stitch here, right there on that neckline. Keeping those raw edges, keeping those layers moving towards my needle just slightly. I'm going to overlap my stitches, and then I'm going to cut everything off. Okay, so let's see how we did. So that's, that's my first crack at my neckline. It looks pretty good. I think with a press, I, that, that V will look really nice. So now from here, I'm going to press everything and I'm going to work on covering over that back neckline, just like it was in the original tee. And then we're going to stitch all the way around it to finish everything off. So here's how you can cover over that back neckline. So there I've got my back neckline. It's kind of irritating sometimes. And I think this is why, this is why ready to wear companies do this and it also makes just a really nice looking finish and also kind of stabilize the neckline so i've got a strip of knit fabric just take any kind of leftover knit that you have and if you can cut it in this the direction that stretches a little bit less that's better so it's one inch wide and go ahead and press it so that the both of the raw edges are coming towards the middle there and i'm going to flip everything around here so that one of those raw edges on the long side of my little strip here is even with the top side of the inside of the back neckline there and I'm just going to put it just even with where the shoulder seam is and you can see I folded over that short end to make it a nice little finish for that side too. So just start stitching here. I've got a narrow zigzag stitch 0 0.5 width 2.5 length and I'm just going to stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance, which is the same seam allowance that we used for the neckline, all the way down to the other opposite shoulder seam. So I'm just going to keep on stitching until I get to that second, that second shoulder seam. When I get there, if I've got any extra fabric, I'll just go ahead and cut off that extra, that extra little bit. So right there, I can see I'm, I'm getting close to where that shoulder seam is. So I'm just going to fold over that short edge and I'll just cut off that extra little bit there. And I'm going to sew right until I get to the end of that. You can backstitch here if you like to, that's okay. Go ahead and cut off your thread. And now we're going to flip over the seam so that that strip is now covering over that seam. And so now we're just going to stitch this down in place. So I actually like to start on the bottom long edge and come back and get that short edge later, just because that tends to be a little, a little lumpy. It's, your needle can get stuck. It's kind of grumpy, you know? So just make it easy for yourself and just start stitching on that bottom side. 
just to stitch everything down. When we've gone all the way around this, then we're just going to go ahead and stitch down the rest of the seam allowance all the way around the neckline to finish it off. You can do this in one pass or you can just sew, sew the back neckline first. Just make sure everything looks nice. So when I get to that shoulder seam, I'm just going to go ahead and pivot my needle. So I'm going to lift up the presser foot and just move my move everything towards me. I'm going to go ahead and just cut off my thread right there. I'm going to come back from the opposite direction so that I can get that other short side of it. You can see even, even just this little bit, it just makes such a nice little finish on this back neckline. So it's totally worth the extra effort to just go ahead and do this. It's going to stabilize that neckline. It feels it's much more comfortable to wear. So really it's just bonuses. Plus if you have a weird, a weird little bit of fabric, you can pop that in there. It's just your own special surprise. <laughs> okay, so cut off your threads and now we're just going to stitch down the seam allowance from the neck seam, from the, the neck band that we did. I'm actually gonna do this on the on the right side of the fabric now. You can still, you can do this on the, on the wrong, from the wrong side still so you make sure that you can get that i'm just going to use the edge of my presser foot to mark and i'm just going to follow along with the edge of my presser foot right where that seam is and that's going to sew a nice even consistent way away from where that seam is i'm also feeling with my hands as i'm going along here where everything is you can see i'm almost to that v when i get to the bottom of that v i'm going just to pivot my needle Drop it, turn everybody, keep on stitching, keep on stitching. So again, just make sure that you're keeping moving, rolling that seam towards, towards the body of the, the t-shirt so that you're making sure that you stitch it down, that you're stitching it down. This is just going to keep everything nice and flat on the inside and just really looking nice. So right there, again, I'm right close to where my back neckline is i'm just going to go ahead and, and stitch it down even though i've already stitched stitched that section down just for the sake of putting in some extra stitching so just go ahead and keep stitching until you get around to those first stitches that you did just we have a nice even consistent line right there and that's all we have for this t-shirt so this is our finished t-shirt you can see we've got a nice nice v-neck now it's really gentle gentle and curving this one started out life as a scoop neck so it's a little bit more of a gently sloping v than um, you could make yourself you can always make them more extreme or less extreme as as you want to or as you know you have you have the you have the t-shirt for this one has a particularly large neckline so i i didn't i wanted to keep it a little bit a little bit more of a gentle v so the v that i'm wearing is you can see a lot more a lot more extreme so just Whatever, whatever you're drawing with your with your curve, you can you can make it a little bit more of a deeper V or more of a, a wider open V. It's all up to you. That's the wonderful thing that when you sew, you can just make things exactly how you want them. So I hope that was a helpful tutorial for you. I hope now that you're gonna go and find find that that old crew neck in your closet and go turn it into a V neck. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you have tried this out and if it helped you. And yeah. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video. See ya! So that was a v-neck. So that was a v-neck. I hope you had a good time with this tutorial. There's lots of other stuff here on Elizabeth Mavis, so check out those videos, and I'll see you later. Bye!